we have something to post. And I want to welcome everyone today. Um, we are doing nonprofits. Um, what do I need for a grant proposal? Um, I just want to introduce you to SCORE if you're not familiar. Uh, SCORE does two different things. One is training in the form of webinars and workshops, and the other is mentoring. Uh, I strongly encourage you to watch for our newsletter. Usually it comes out, uh, at least for the Boston chapter, comes out on Monday. Some of the other chapters might be coming out at different times of the, of the week, but um, or to check out the websites for your chapter. Uh, we have a lot of new topics, a lot of uh, old topics that are always important. So I definitely encourage you to check that listing out. Um, mentoring. Mentoring is free and confidential. Our mentors are volunteers and they come to us with a wide variety of experience and knowledge that they're looking to share with small business owners. Uh, we work with folks at all stages of the game. Uh, we're working with those that are trying to decide if small business ownership is right for them. We're working with those that are in that planning phase. And we are working with those that are already in business. Perhaps they're coming to us to help plan for, uh, for growth or they're having problems with their marketing or they're having problems with accounting. You, you name it, we've got a mentor that can help you with those topics. Uh, if you've never met with a SCORE mentor before, that first meeting will be getting to know what your goals and challenges are, and they will help formulate a plan to help get you there or to overcome those challenges. So uh, again, it's always it's always free. So, you, you know, you've got nothing to lose. And we have a, just a fantastic group of people. Um, just they're all super smart and, and ready to help. So uh, to get that mentor, you can go to score.org and there's a little zip code box and you can type in your zip code and it'll get you to the right chapter. You can also go directly to the different chapter websites listed here. These are the chapters in our district. Uh, of course, SCORE is a national organization. Um, so, you know, you can reach out that way. Um, you can put a note in chat and I'll make sure someone contacts you. Um, we do have, a, expect to have a good crowd on today. So we are definitely using the Q&A tab so we don't lose track of questions. Everything else can go into chat, but if you have a question you would like asked to our presenter today, please put it in that Q&A tab so that when it comes time for the questions, I can easily find them. Because uh, sometimes if you put them in chat, uh, they're just a little bit difficult to um, track down if there's, especially if there's a lot of things rolling through there. Uh, so definitely do that for us. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull down my share, and I would like to introduce you to uh, a SCORE Boston mentor for us. This is Sam Solomon, and he is a head of our, our nonprofit practice group and um, is going to be able to answer and, and provide you with a tremendous amount of information today. So I'm handing it over to you, Sam. Well, thank you, Teresa. Um, Teresa talked about the work we do with, with uh, startup businesses, small businesses. When I first became a mentor uh, several years ago, <clears throat> my expertise was in nonprofits because I was a consultant in nonprofits for about 30 years. And uh, I thought for sure joining this uh, business-focused organization was going to leave me with uh, very little to do. Um, I was uh, pleased, in fact, to, to see that there were lots of people who wanted to establish nonprofits, and uh, uh, Teresa has directed a significant number of people to me over the, over this time. Um, <clears throat> so today, uh, I'd like to focus on something uh, that I'm quite familiar with. Uh, as a consultant to nonprofits, I did a lot of different things. But one thing I did consistently throughout my consulting work was um, preparing grant proposals uh, because most nonprofits need funding and um, grant, grants provide can provide a, uh, a significant source of uh, revenue for an organization that is in a good position to take advantage uh, of it. So today I'm going to talk about the grant writing process generally, uh, how to become eligible for grants, uh, what the sources of grant funding are, 
and how to develop a, an effective grant proposal. And lastly, um, the types of supporting documents you should have available when you submit a grant proposal to a funder. I often hear uh, <clears throat> the word grant used somewhat generally uh, when uh, organizations talk about uh, generating funding. So I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like to uh, try to distinguish between what a grant is and what the sources of grants are from um, other types of funding that sometimes nonprofits can be eligible for. <clears throat> a grant is funding that's provided by a funding organization. It might be a government agency. Um, more often than not, grant funding comes from corporations that have charitable giving programs or foundations of which there are many, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, um, <clears throat> that are interested in funding uh, worthwhile projects and ideas that are brought to them. <clears throat> Overwhelmingly, these funders require applicants to be certified as tax-exempt nonprofit organizations under Section 501c3 of the Internal Revenue Service Code. Now you may have heard that heard of that designation. It is essential if you're seeking funding from uh, a, a public foundation, such as a, a, a such as a, a corporation or a um, or a, a freestanding. Uh, established foundation, you've heard, no doubt you've heard of some of the major foundations like Rockefeller and Ford, Kellogg, and so forth. In the greater Boston area where I primarily work, um, there are many, many foundations um, that support the work of nonprofits. <clears throat> I want to be clear that a grant is not a loan. It's money given to support a proposed project. It doesn't need to be repaid. There are some uh, vehicles for uh, where uh, foundations invest, or excuse me, um, uh, co corporations will invest in a nonprofit to produce a certain result uh, for for an, for a program that they may be 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 interested in. But that is not uh, considered a loan. It may have to be repaid. It's also different from contracts. Um, nonprofits are, are commonly eligible for contracts. Contracts primarily come from government agencies. In, uh, in Massachusetts and Rhode Island and other New England uh, states, contracts are issued on a competitive basis by government agencies. Programs that you are generally familiar with that are overwhelmingly supported by uh, state contracts and to some extent local uh, contracts, uh, city government uh, contracts, are things like the child care programs, youth development, uh, elder support, a whole range of social service, also um, general education uh, programs. <clears throat> but these are contracts that are <clears throat> awarded with the expectation that a particular type of service is going to be provided by the nonprofit that receives it and, and reported back to the funding uh, agency in, in, in the government. What I'm gonna focus on again is a grant, the whole grant process. Uh, <clears throat> a grant proposal that's going to be effective has to start out with good solid information about the applicant organization. 
what is it that the organization does? Specifically, why does the organization need the requested grant money? And specifically, how the money will be used. <clears throat> uh, generally, I, I, I did, as I said, I did a lot of grant writing. And um, one of the things that I think is very important is to draft an executive summary. Uh, that is usually a, a, a paragraph. It could be a third, say a third of a page, maybe a half a page that concisely defines your project mission and the grant request. It outlines the basic needs and impact of the project. It provides an overview what the funder of what the funders should expect the project to produce and make the case briefly as to how the funders grant will support the project. You want to have this summary right up front so that the reader of the proposal knows right at the right at the outset who you are and what you're looking for. Foundations get hundreds and hundreds of proposals. So you want to get the attention of the grant reader uh, right up front. And that's something to keep in mind. And you can achieve that by putting together a short executive summary. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, then you get into the part of the proposal, the real uh, content. Um, central to a proposal as a statement of need. What's the issue that you're looking to address? This, the, the specific issue. Um, do you have supporting data along with the sources of that data that can convince the funder that there is a real need in this area. For example, if you're looking to support a youth development program, uh, talking about the area of impact, the, the community, uh, how many youth there are <clears throat> that fit within this population, um, what sort of challenges they face on a day-to-day -day business, particularly in urban communities. Um, very important to be specific. What are some of the numbers that, can, they, that, that you can utilize? Then explaining why your organization has the best or one of the best solutions to address the problem that you are outlining. What's your experience? What have, what have been some of your achievements in, in this area? Also, I think it's important to express some urgency. Why does this issue need to be addressed at the moment and for the foreseeable future? You want to create overall in this statement of need uh, a sense that th this is an important issue. We, we all read in the daily newspapers, um, mostly you know, digital these days, uh, and um, see on tele local television uh, evidence of serious problems, for example, in dealing with uh, <clears throat> youth that aren't in supporting programs. And if you're an agency that uh, is attempting to address this program, or, or, or excuse me, this need, you're in a good position to speak from your experience about why it's important to deal with this issue in a timely way. <clears throat> Next, after the statement of need, <clears throat> It's important to highlight specific goals and outcomes that you expect 
you don't want just a general statement that we're going to uh, run a program. Um, you want to be able to say one of, uh, among the things that we're attempting to do are A, B, and C. And these are the outcomes that we expect if we have money to address this aspect of our program, we would expect a certain number of additional youth to be served by the work that we do. Uh, <clears throat> outline the strategies that you are going to use in order to, uh, to uh, accomplish your goals. Detail the time frame. Um, your request should not be open-ended. You want to say that in the next three months, six months, or by the end of this grant period, <clears throat> these are um, the steps that we will take. These are the methods we will use uh, to address the issue that we are outlining in this proposal. And then link um, how your solution will address each point of the proposal that you are submitting to the uh, to the grant maker. As part of this, most foundations today <clears throat> want um, to expect you to produce an evaluation of your success. They want to know at the end of the grant period what of you, which of your goals will, will have been achieved. Again, numbers matter. How many youth did you serve? What types of in initiatives did you uh, underwrite with the grant that helped you achieve these goals? when the program will conclude for, for, for a given year, uh, and <clears throat> what data, generally speaking, what data do you have based on the work you've done that will indicate that the project has been successful? Other funding, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is, um, is, is going to be important. Um, sometimes you're able to secure uh, funding from in-kind support. Uh, you're going to perhaps get funding from other uh, foundations or um, other funding organizations. Um, foundations typically do not want to be the only funder for a program. That's not a hard rule, but most would like to know that they are being joined by other funders to uh, uh, support the work you're doing. And it's to your benefit as a, <clears throat> excuse me, as a program uh, organization to have multiple funders that are underwriting this effort. So you're not dependent on one funder. It's also important to keep in mind that most foundations, uh, and that's corporate and public foundations, um, will not support an organization indefinitely. What I typically found um, was that the cutoff often was after three years because there's so many other organizations that are seeking funding. And most foundations would like to uh, turn over the list of uh, projects that, that, that they're supporting and spread their money around in other directions. And so you want to have a stream of um, potential funders that you can go to on, an, on, an, um, on a regular basis. If the project that you have in mind is going to run indefinitely, then you need to explain to the funder how you're going to continue to support the work 
when uh, that funder is no longer going to uh, support you. And I think that ties in quite well with the comment I made earlier, and that is that no foundation wants, to, or very few foundations certainly, will want to be the only funder for, for a program. <clears throat> um, then there are, um, as a, a whole list of items uh, that I that I uh, categorize as organizational information. Uh, apart from the request that you're making for your program need, um, you need to have, uh, I think, in order to be successful, a, a clear statement of the components of your organization that spell out, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, what's your mission statement as an agency? That should be state it up front in your proposal. You may have it as a separate document. Secondly, what's the history and track record of your organization? How long have you been in business? What have some of your major achievements been? Funders want to know that they're investing in a, in a going enterprise that, can, um, that they can rely upon, that they're not simply throwing their money at a organization that uh, is um, is a, a, at a moment in time uh, expressing wishful goals. They want to know what you've accomplished. Um, what's the population and the community that you serve? The more demographic data that you can provide, which is often available in census uh, in, in census data, um the better because it gives um it paints a clearer picture of the population that you're serving what are the uh <clears throat> racial ethnic gender uh characteristics of the population that you're serving <clears throat> excuse me in addition um there's some attachments Board of Directors roster. Most funders want to see a serious list of directors. Um, and to the extent that you can add a brief uh, uh, clause or phrase that describes what the what each director's um, role in the community is, like, for example, if you have uh, a bank officer or an educator, it gives more status to to the board and says sends a message that your board is a serious uh, part of the organization um, that supports the work of the agency. You need to have an IRS tax exempt letter and and um, and I'll briefly make the point that if you don't have, if you haven't been certified as a tax exempt organization by the IRS with a tax ID number, it'll be very difficult to get funding from foundations, uh, corporate giving programs, uh, because there are tax implications when a foundation gives money to an organization. Um, it needs to account for that in a tax return that it submits each year. And what it submits each year is an IRS Form 990. Form 990 is essentially a tax return. Like for us as individuals, we submit a 1040. For organizations, nonprofit organizations, it's a 990. And they need to account for how their money has been spent and what revenues they've received that they then turn around and um, and give away to uh, to similarly tax exempt organizations. So if you haven't been approved by the IRS, that's a very important step to take uh, before you start seeking um, 
grant, uh, excuse me, uh, support from from uh, uh, from the funding organizations. Uh, <clears throat> most foundations, corporate giving programs want to see an annual audited statement of your finances. Um, it's very important for them to know that you are regularly audited so that it so that there is a picture of a sound financially sound organization uh, for them to uh, to to have confidence in. Um, two more items. You need to submit an annual budget spelling out your revenues and their source, your expenses in categories. You don't have to account for every line item, but a budget should should let them know how much money is coming in, how much is going out, and for what purposes. And lastly, if you do an annual report, and not all organizations do, it's a good um, addendum to your application because it it's a serious document that describes your work. Even if it isn't a fancy four color um, brochure, if you do uh, just a written um, report of what your accomplishments have been in the past year, that's a very telling presentation to, to a funder. Anything you can do to underscore the seriousness of your organization and the way you conform to uh, general requirements for, um, for grant making will support your effort. <clears throat> the project budget is also an important piece. You should be able to put a dollar amount <clears throat> on the cost that you are uh, incurring or will incur for running the program. Uh, Many funders have a um, have a, a budget template that you fill out. Uh, in other cases, just the general budget form that you use it will be sufficient. Um, the budget, as I alluded to earlier, should spell out how much money you're requesting from the funder and how the funds will be used, supporting such things as staffing general overhead, spelling out any income that's earned or received from contributions. Let's say uh, you have an annual appeal and you get money from individual contributors, or you have a big event each year, you want to indicate how much revenue is uh, from that event is invested in the programs. Uh, the budget is a very important piece because it helps the Funder, understand how you're going to spend the money. Um, I think that Teresa is going to post um, so this following information. I want to talk a little bit about it. Um, these are sources of grant information uh, that I think are very important based on my own experience professionally. <clears throat> There's an organization that used to be known as Associated Grant Makers of Massachusetts. It's now uh, known as uh, Philanthropy Massachusetts. Um, and you'll see the, um, the, uh, the address, the uh, digital address. Um, I suggest strongly looking at that. Um, they have, the, the organization is, one of the largest uh, philanthropic libraries in, in in the country, and certainly in 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 New England, um, they have a wide range of uh, philanthropic uh, resources. Uh, if you're in the Boston area or expect to be in Boston, um, it's worth paying a visit to uh, their library. They have staff that can be helpful and help in um, targeting funders that might support the might be able to support the program that you have in mind um, and i strongly suggest using it um, 
<clears throat> if you um, are inclined, you can become a member of Philanthropy Massachusetts um, so that you have access to their online uh, library. Uh, but you can certainly access the information by visiting the library, which is in downtown Boston. Um, and um, I think you'd find it find it a very important resource, particularly in identifying funders in the southern New England area and perhaps even further north. <clears throat> Excuse me. Part of the the philanthropy Massachusetts uh, website uh, includes the common proposal form. The common proposal form is a very useful template. I used it extensively in my own grant writing. Um, it's it's a it's a framework for drafting a proposal. Um, and what I and I found that particularly was particularly useful once I had a template to produce a significant number of proposals to a range of funders simply by popping information into the funder's application form, taking it from the template, or in many cases, simply submitting the filled out template as your grant proposal. And so if you have followed the guide, the guidelines in the, um, in the uh, common proposal form, it should be fairly easy to uh, produce a proposal and you could produce any number of proposals fairly rapidly. And this is particularly important if you have a small organization uh, because you don't have a lot of staff to spread around for various tasks. <clears throat> and I can't, I can't recommend using this form uh, more highly. <clears throat> The second uh, major resource is the foundation directory online. Um, this is a national compendium of funders. Um, and uh, it lists almost probably every foundation in the country and some internationally. As I noted, it's expensive. It, over a thousand dollars a year to uh, have the most current edition, but you can easily find um, this directory in a, in a fair number of uh, public libraries. I have used uh, I've used that uh, I've used public libraries um, quite often in order to access it. Um, it's really not a particularly good investment. Um, if you're simply going to use it a few times a year uh, to, to, uh, to identify funders. What makes it so valuable is it, it heavily utilize, utilizes keywords. So if you're looking to fund um, um, senior programs, you can put in a keyword and also uh, localize your, your, your um, request by indicating the state or community that's being served. And it will help you narrow down significantly the, the, a list of funders that may uh, be most helpful uh, in helping you uh, uh, find the kind of support that you're looking for. I found it enormously helpful, and I would strongly recommend using this in, this type of information um, in developing your your funding proposals. Um, I mentioned <clears throat> um, I mentioned uh, earlier, and I want to uh, review it, uh, particularly if you're an organization that provides. Um, education, social services. Um, and that is the role of government contracts. Um, when, uh, when the state uh, authorizes legislatively 
a program to support certain uh, services. The state doesn't have the staffing that is typically required to provide those services. What the state typically does is send out uh, a, a what is often known as an RFP, a request for proposal, um, and they spell out um, what type of um, service delivery they're they're looking for, um, what the what the requirements um, for fulfilling the or, or for qualifying uh, under the RFP are. Um, and the most common of these that I'm most familiar with are things like child care, early education, health care. For example, if you're a part of a, a community health organization, community development is very big. Uh, elder care, after school programs, youth development generally. Um, these are the types of organizations that principally uh, are eligible for um, state mandated programs. And the state funds proposals that they believe best, sat best will satisfy the end result that the state is looking for in, in uh, succeeding um, in, in the program. Um, last uh, point I would make is that um, if you have the luxury of some additional funding uh, in-house, uh, your, um, your funding <clears throat> goal can be enhanced by using the services of a skilled grant writer um, that can identify grant prospects such as uh, those that are available at in the foundation directory or at philanthropy Massachusetts and then generating applications that's a that is a, that's sometimes a luxury that many small organizations can't afford you can always hire somebody who's, who works as, as a consultant uh, to do grant writing I was once part of a, an organization, a professional organization of uh, nonprofit consultants um, known as um, Nonprofit Consulting Network, very original. Um, through that organization, I made, uh, I made friends with many uh, people who served the nonprofit world, um, and many of them were grant writers. And so you can hire a grant writer for a specific for a specified uh, type of um, grant writing, let's say a special project, or for ongoing grant uh, grant writing uh, is to support your your budget. Um, <clears throat> that's a general overview. Um, I'm happy to answer questions that um, you may have. Um, as long as Teresa will allow me. Yeah, I do have questions listed. So um, definitely have a couple. And if people want to get any more listed, please um, go ahead and do that now. Um, <clears throat> how difficult is it to obtain a grant for a new organization? Um, do you need to be in business for a certain time period to get a grant? Well, that was a question I <clears throat> I thought I might hear. And I'm, uh, I'm, I, uh, I would say it's difficult. Um, because you need a track record. And <clears throat> I think I've seen, I don't think, I, I have seen often a new organization because a lot of the work I do with uh, nonprofit clients at um, SCORE, uh, they, these are startups. And um, there is an expectation that uh, that grants will be available to support. There are very few, there are very, very few uh, funders that will write or they will issue a 
grant to a new organization. They want to see uh, what you've done, what your support has been generally. Do you have <clears throat> a strong board of directors? Uh, have you had success in raising uh, money from individual donors, which is how many uh, organizations start fundraising? They pull together uh, a list of people that they know and ask for support. Um, I think individual fundraising is one of the best ways to expand your donor base. And, and one of the things that I strongly recommend is to um, go about the process of establishing a board of directors in a very, strate very strategic way. Uh, that is to decide what are your needs. Uh, for example, you want people on your uh, board uh, who have financial backgrounds. Um, you want people who do marketing or branding work because raising your visibility in the community is critical to getting support. Um, if you know someone who works in the area of um, uh, events, somebody who's skilled at planning events, that's very helpful. And frankly, you want people on your board who understand the importance of making personal contributions. I, I, I often said to clients that um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't invest in people who are simply going to show up and have their names on the letterhead. You want people to be making uh, contributions in various ways. Um, there's a, a maxim that you want people to bring <clears throat> wealth, wisdom, or work. So in other words, you want people who have money that they can readily contribute and hopefully in, uh, hopefully in four and five figures. But you also want people who have experience so if you're, for example, an, an educationally based organization, having, a, having a, an educator, someone with a lot of experience is, is a very important component of an effective board. And then there are people who simply can't afford to give much money, but they pitch in to support the work of the organization, they show up, um, very important to look for people like that. Uh, looking to your friends uh, who don't necessarily fit one of those categories, but may be an easy uh, person to attract to your board, probably has um, limited value in terms of the strength of the organization. So I think board development is really important in a way to, in the uh, effort to create a strong financial base. But it does take time to win the support of, of foundations because they do want to see uh, that you have been, uh, that you've got a solid organization and that you uh, have been successful in generating funding from a variety of sources beyond the foundation. I hope that responds to your question. Yeah. Um, so if you don't have your 501c3 yet, um, is using a fiscal sponsor that does have that status, um, is that recommended? Yes, I strongly suggest I, I strongly suggest that. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the concept, if you're a new organization, a new nonprofit, uh, it takes, it varies. It takes... <clears throat> anywhere from two to six months to get um, your 501c, 501c3 tax exemption. In the meantime, if you can find a, uh, an organization that's willing to take you on 
as a, uh, as a sponsored organization, you can use that organization, which has a 501c3 designation, uh, to send out your grant requests and receive any funding that you obtain and then transfer that money back to you. It's, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but if you go on Google and look up fiscal sponsor, which is different than a fiscal agent, um, you will get a better understanding, but it's a, it's a great way to, to start raising money right from the beginning. And I, I, I often recommend that to, order, to new organizations. Okay. How imperative is having a board of directors to getting a grant? Yeah, I just sort of talked about that. Um, I think it's very important. Um, the more, to the extent that you have recognized, and people with recognized names, but, you, but most importantly, that you can demonstrate that these are solid citizens. Um, bankers, uh, in, uh, investors, uh, people who are comfortable dealing, who professionally deal, deal with money, um, ha having an accountant on, on your board says ah. something about, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. It, it says something about how, um, how responsible you are, uh, fiscally. Um, and I mentioned some other types of people that you would want to have er earlier, but I think it's very important. And I, I uh, strongly suggest putting the time in to find people who are willing to associate with your organization and bring strength to the organization. Um, how often is it okay to go back and ask a grantor um, for funds again like for example if you've got a grant from someone mm -hmm. in 2021 can i can we ask again now or is there a time range no uh i mean there are i can recall a small number of foundations who would say um things like this is a one-time grant only um, or you're only eligible to come to us once every three years but most funders don't put any restrictions like that on they will let you know in the course of funding um whether they're going to continue uh indefinitely or whether there's a there's a uh, there's an end point um but my experience is that funders are more than willing to continue supporting an organization for at least two or three cycles and some even more than that uh, so definitely plan to go back unless there is a stop sign a stop sign with your first grant okay does uh does a fiscal sponsor have the right to hold or manage your organization's funds um we sometimes that um creates um some complications the role of the fiscal sponsor <clears throat> is to submit a proposal that you have drafted and then any funds that you receive should go into a special account that they maintain for you. Um, it should be perhaps at their bank. And as soon as that money is received, they should transfer the money to your bank account. Um, I strongly suggest that any time you enter into a special into a fiscal sponsor relationship, that you spell out the expectations in writing. I remember dealing with uh, a score client uh, probably two or three years ago, who had a problem with uh, it, her, with its fiscal sponsor because they didn't spell out writing what the, um, what the uh, arrangement was. And the agency had mingled the funds with their own. Um, and, they, and she was having difficulty in getting the money that, to, uh, that, that she was, 
that she was owed. Your funds received by the fiscal sponsor should never be mingled with the fiscal sponsor's money. They should set up a separate account for the purpose of serving as a, as a pass-through uh, and to provide that money to you when it's received. So you can go online again and you could find a lot of information on fiscal sponsorships that may in fact be, be a, a sam a sample agreements that you can utilize. Um, so definitely, definitely do that. Okay, I have two fiscal sponsor questions. One is, does a fiscal sponsor ever expect something in return? And um, is applying for a grant through a fiscal sponsor the same or different? Well, <clears throat> well, it, it, in the sense, it's different in the sense that um, uh, you're not submitting it directly yourself, but your name is on the proposal and the submission, and there should be um, some indication in the submission that the fiscal sponsor is submitting it on your behalf. That needs to be very clear so that the funder knows what the, what the arrangement is. And I, remind me again the first question. Um, oh, Shoot, I forgot. Sorry, I already closed it. Let me let me go back and find it. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, I should have started off with, with number one. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's not. It's not your fault. Oh, does the fiscal sponsor sponsor expect anything in return? Um, they shouldn't, but money does strange things, so they may want a fee. Yeah, and and I think it's appropriate if the fiscal sponsor has any um, any expenses that's related to setting up the account. Uh, or, but I think I think it's best not to not to suggest it. It's also good to the extent you can to uh, to arrange such a relationship with an organization whose leadership you know. That isn't always the case, but um, you know there's some organizations that don't want any part of it, and so they won't um, they won't even agree to 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 do the sponsorship. I see there's a question. A question just came up: the fiscal sponsor charges a flat fee. Uh, I missed the rest of it. I think it was one and a quarter percent. I'm not sure. Yeah, five to twelve percent flat fee. Yeah, I, I, you know, if that's the deal, best deal you can get, I guess you'd have to do it. But I, I it's it's certainly defensible if you're going to, you know, if you're going to through a certain amount of activity in order to um, to produce or to fulfill your part of the uh, agreement. But um, that amount is probably um, probably excessive, I think, because yeah. it cuts into what is probably going to be limited funding for you. Um, I do have a question about the net. It's called Network for Good. Have you heard of them? And uh, um, I have you... heard of it, and I cannot tell you on the spot exactly what they do, but I, I know that they're on Google and I would definitely look them up. Um, and um, see what they can do for you. Okay. Uh, let me sort through. Some of these are very specific um, to their actual company. And I, I very much would strongly encourage you to talk to um, one of the SCORE mentors. We have a handful of nonprofit SCORE mentors in Boston, and plus there's some scattered throughout the district and nation as well. And um, they can really delve into your specific uh, nonprofit and the questions and concerns you have. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything and they just, and they can really get into the nitty gritty on, on your specific issues. Um, so I really strongly encourage you to, to seek that out. 
Um, let's see if we have any more that are a little bit more generic. Uh, there was a bookkeeping question. Can you provide guidance on bookkeeping for nonprofits? Any specific templates or anything that you recommend? I think two things. One is uh, there are people in the Boston chapter uh, who I'm sure can. Um, but I will tell you one of the most useful resources when I need information of that sort is Google. I find an amazing amount of quality information. So I would look it up. I would look up um, bookkeeping templates for nonprofits. Right. And we and, and we definitely have mentors that have bookkeeping um, backgrounds or accounting yes. backgrounds that can absolutely. People, yeah, absolutely help you with that information too. Um, do you need to have a certain financial status? Um, let's see, what kind of financial status is required to get funding from a fiscal sponsor? Well, um, status, I'm not entirely sure what that it means, but I'll try to figure out something. Um, if you're using a fiscal sponsor, you don't yet have nonprofit status, you are presumably seeking it through an application to the IRS. And by the way, if you're new, you need to register your organization um, with your with your state. Um, it's a pro process uh, called um, uh, incorporation. You have to be incorporated. And certainly in Massachusetts, you submit an application to the Secretary of State's office to be incorporated. Uh, it's not a difficult process. Uh, it can be done fairly quickly. Um, so definitely, um, that's really, you basically, if you're new and you want to start fundraising, um, you don't have to have a special status except um, to be incorporated <clears throat> and to be able to indicate that you are, um, you've applied for uh, tax exempt status. Do um, we have a list of uh, grant writers? Well, <clears throat> I, um, I I saw a question pop up uh, asking whether I could do grant writing, and I'm through our because. Oh, First of all, I'm tired of working, so, uh, so I, 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 I'm not, not available for, for that reason and also because um, uh, our, our code of ethics uh, prevents us from developing business um, through the work we do for SCORE, and that's fine with me. I like giving the, my services away. It's a very, it's a very good way to keep myself engaged. Um, but I would say <clears throat> that you can, as I, I alluded to earlier, the um, uh, Nonprofit Consultants Network, which you can find again on online, has, and they have a complete roster of members with the types of services that they provide. Um, uh, you could probably identify someone. Uh, <clears throat> By the way, I would I was going to say, and I'll say it now, I am more than happy to hear from any of you uh, who are interested in some counseling or score. Uh, you just go through Teresa, uh, who makes the uh, assignments, um, and I could evaluate people that I know who could do that. Uh, you would want to uh, to. Uh, find people who have specific experience in grant writing who know uh, the sort of the the um, grant making lay of the land in the in the greater Boston area or if you're in another state uh, again uh, it, it, it would provide the same same kind of information but we're here and I just put my email into the 
into the chat, I can help you schedule with um, any of our nonprofit mentors here at SCORE Boston, or if you just email me and say, hey, uh, I want to meet with somebody in my chapter, I can direct you in the right direction to help connect with one of them. Um, absolutely do that for you. Um, so I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. I think we had a lot of great questions, and I strongly encourage you to reach out to us. Uh, thanks, Sam, for sh sharing your knowledge with us today. And um, yeah. Thanks, everyone, uh, and have a great day. Yeah, uh, uh, Teresa, I just saw a question about Philadelphia. Um, mm -hmm. And there is a SCORE chapter <clears throat> in Philadelphia, I'm confident. Mm -hmm. We we operate locally here, but I've served clients from different parts of the country mm -hmm. um, because we have a broad national net network. And uh, so take advantage of us. Yeah, they can go to the score.org uh, website and you can put in your zip code and um, put in a request for a nonprofit mentor and um, they'll connect you with somebody in Philadelphia if that's what you prefer. So, okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <clears throat> Bye.